Hey, I'm Dea from DM Paints. Welcome back to my channel. And if this is your first time, welcome. And I'm really, really glad you can join me for today's video. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a time lapse of a larger alcohol ink piece. It's going to be a 36 by 46 print. So first in the lineup, we have Sapphire Blue, Mantilla Black. I'm just assuming that's how it's pronounced. It sounds Spanish, so. Pinata brass. Yeah, this, I really, really love this color. And yeah, those are the three colors we're gonna be using. Keeping it very simple. And that's it. Let's get started. So in today's episode for the 36 by 46 commission, I have chosen a kind of direction that I wanted to do. So I'm first laying down my alcohol that way when I put the inks on top, they have somewhere to flow. So if I have a specific direction in mind, I lay down my alcohol in that way and then the alcohol ink follows. So for this piece, I kind of wanted to create some sort of form that kind of spanned out of the center almost as if it had wings so I started with one corner and just started to blow my inks outwards into that corner what I did actually for the inks that you see me laying down right now is I mixed the sapphire blue with a mantilla black to get a darker blue so you're going to see just now if you put down just sapphire blue the type of blue that you get is a little bit different so it's a lot more vibrant as opposed to if you mix the mantilla black and the sapphire blue you're going to get a much richer a deeper blue almost like a navy and i just really like the tones that it creates you have the deeper blue going on with the lighter bits and i'll sometimes add just black to create an even deeper contrast So what I've done here is I've actually taken a cup, I've put in my two colors, and I've added isopropyl alcohol to the cup, so that way I can pour the ink right on and it's not just going to stay in one spot because it has the alcohol already mixed in with the inks. It's just going to flow around a lot easier. This tip is good for big pieces like this because you don't have to put down the inks drop by drop and it gives you kind of a more flowing look and you don't have to spread it around as much because again you're pouring with the alcohol so it's going to spread a lot easier so here i'm just creating my second wing and i'm placing the inks in the direction that i want to see them take form i've seen some artists add the brass or any sort of metallic after they place their inks i tend to put mine as i'm working with the inks and i find this is because I like to just see where the brass kind of spreads out in the piece.
Inks are super messy, but the great thing is that the Nara paper allows you to wipe down the inks just completely to nothing. So that means if you've made a super big mistake that you really don't like, you just take some of your alcohol and you can wipe it down completely. And that is the difference between Yupo paper, which a lot of alcohol ink artists use, and Nara paper, or there are other brands of synthetic paper, but this is just the one that I prefer. So what I tend to do a lot is move back and forth with my heat gun and this is to get some movement within the piece itself and within the inks because when it dries you kind of get that wispy effect like if you pay attention to the bottom right corner you can see that kind of wispy effect you can see that movement and that is actually because I've moved around the heat gun enough and when you're moving around the heat gun and working with it it's going to help you not to get the super rough edges i have some rough edges right now in my piece and what i tend to do is i lay down my colors first in the placement that i want and then i tend to add some alcohol on the sides and rework the sides to get a softer look so i've just added a ton of the blue black mixture in my cup right there to just fill up the space in the corner i wanted this print to be mostly filled up i didn't want a lot of white space in this print the thing to know about the metallic inks is that they don't really act like regular inks so if you see they stay in place a lot firmer than the other inks they're a lot heavier so you want to have the inks down when there's a lot of alcohol so that you're able to freely move them once they kind of set into place even when you add alcohol in after they don't budge that much you really got to work on them as they're kind of still activated by the alcohol if that makes sense they tend to move around in chunks they kind of clump together so just keep this in mind when you're making your design and if you're trying to make specific lines with the gold and stuff like that you're just gonna have to play around with it a lot and see what kind of effects that you can get What I tend to do sometimes in my pieces is just take the gold ink and run it through the piece to get some really, really thick gold accent lines. When the gold is not shaken up that well, you might not get a very opaque accent line like you want. So make sure you're shaking the bottle really, really well. So the heat gun that I'm using is actually a Revlon hairbrush so i bought this on amazon i've seen other artists use it and what's great about it is that it has different heat settings which my old heat gun didn't have my old heat gun just blasted hot air and that can be sometimes bad for synthetic paper because it tends to warp so you will literally see your paper kind of bending upwards as you're working on it if the air is too hot and if you're leaving it in one place for too long so i really really like this heat gun because it has a high heat setting with cool air a high heat setting with hot air and then like a low heat setting with like warm to hot air and that's good because it gives me variety i tend to work with on bigger pieces i tend to work with the one that's a bit of like a cooler air or it's a kind of like warm air with like high movement so that way i can move around the inks quickly and then when i want to set designs in place i put it on the low heat setting and work in that area slowly so that they can just start to dry in the form that i want them to if you don't like your edges and if it looks just too harsh you can just go in with the alcohol and rework the parts that you don't like and this is what's great about inks is that it's just so forgiving and you have so much room for error and if you really really didn't like your piece you could scrap it and just start from zero with this paper it's just awesome So I'm going in with a pipette. I bought like a ton of these off Amazon. It was like 10 bucks, 15 bucks, I don't know, for like over 100, I think 200 maybe, I don't know. And I'm just using them to make some little accent pieces. I've made little dots. So I just took the alcohol and dropped it on the paper and it completely separates the inks. 
and then I added some more gold accents with a needle tip bottle that I also got off Amazon and it just helps with precision which the bottle that it originally comes in doesn't have. And that was the time lapse of my commission piece, the 36 by 46 inches. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments below what you guys think about the time lapse videos. If there's anything that you want me to specifically discuss in my videos, any questions you may have, please leave that down in the comments below. And I'd really, really appreciate if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please share it with your friends, with your family, and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next week. What's the word? Blue. You like the job I did?